G'day folks. Oh, back to the gurney again. Uh, I machined this flange last night. I think I'll add that video in at the end of it. I uh, machined it on the motor shaft so it runs a lot truer. It doesn't vibrate anymore. At least not much. Um, yeah, a lot of good responses on what might be causing the problem. Could be the uh, unloader valve there, or it could be this. Initially I thought I'd actually open this up when I got it, but it doesn't look like I have. The nut hasn't been off in years. So, I'm thinking that might just be the problem. The old fittings are all rusty as hell, so it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, I reckon we'd have rust scale and shit clogging that bloody um, inline strainer. So if we're not getting enough water in through the intake, because this is a common intake manifold going to both cylinders, if it can't supply full water flow through that little inlet, it's not going to work. Like, this isn't one of those eco water saving karchers, karcher type cleaners which can run off a little piddle of water. This thing actually needs a full, full head of pressure to work. Well, full volume anyway, not so much pressure, but just good volume. And uh, it won't get that if this strainer is plugged. So let's pull that apart and have a look. G'day folks. Well, I think I found the problem with the gurney. Um, I checked the inlet strainer and everything like that. That's all fine, clean, working. But I got the, uh, I took the discharge line off the check valve. That's the return outlet there. I took that off and just ran the pressure cleaner and it was sticking open like even when I pulled the trigger on the gun it was just pissing water out everywhere and adjusting it didn't change anything so the only thing I can determine is there's a bit of wear on this seat here there's no ball like some people were suggesting it's actually a little Teflon nipple of sorts and uh, that, that stainless steel retainer and nipple slide out and close this off I guess when there's back pressure probably supposed to be spring loaded but A it's very stiff I can't get it out at the moment without forcing it and B there's pitting and wear on that seat probably from fine particles and crap coming through the water and it's just acted like a sandblaster. Unfortunately that nipple also has a bit of uh, pitting and scoring on it but I'm hoping if I can get this out intact I might be able to just give it a quick skim on the lathe like just take a fraction off it and it'll seal again so he's hoping that that works um, otherwise I don't know I'm a bit lost for uh, ideas on this one this can also be adjusted to spring tension as well that's a lock nut at the top there and the main body of it so I could always adjust it but yeah it's an interesting device there's a bypass passage here which this screw regulates by opening or closing it as you wind it out. That's what that grub screw is for. There's a passage up there and a passage down there for pressure differential so it's almost working like a reversing valve on an air conditioner which uses pressure differential from a solenoid except this one's internally governed I suppose. It's like mechanical programming on an automatic transmission. It uses fluid and mechanical stuff to program itself in a certain sequence. Fluid pressure changes, things shift and move pistons move. That's about all I could put it down to. So yeah, I'm going to clean this up, chuck it back together again and we'll put it into the into the gurney and see what happens. I mean, worst comes to worst I'll have to find another one because I'm pretty sure this one's rooted. It's the only other thing I, I can find. The pump seems to work. I haven't tried plugging the outlet and just seeing what pressure comes up but I'm sure if I did it'd probably rise pretty damn high if not dangerously high. So uh, I'm not going to do that, but I'll uh, give this a try. Thanks for watching. Okay, well, I've got the piston out. Um, yeah, that's what was left of the O ring, and it was all jammed around behind it. So that's the problem. It's had water blowing past it, and it's been sticking. So that O ring's just trashed. So I went to Repco and got a couple of uh, suitable ish replacements. Should do the job. I'll polish that bore up a bit too, it looks a bit sad. Uh, again, I'll still redo the seat. Probably won't touch that little nipple on the end because that's made out of um, Teflon and it should conform to the seat on that anyway. That's the least of my worries now that I know what that was doing. Good. Put it back together again. Okay, well I'm not a complete idiot after all. It's not so much how you screw the uh, end on it. It's the fact that that little orifice in there, the main jet, was blocked. 
like 100% blocked. It took a fair bit of force with a bit of spring spring wire to get the piece of crap out of it, but it's free now, so I should be able to screw this back on and make some pressure. And that explains why it snapped back onto my finger when I pulled down on it while it was running. Um, it shouldn't really do that because it'd be unloaded, but because of all the back pressure, it acted like a piston and pushed back. So let's put this back together properly and try it again. Oh, nearly there. I've done all the O-rings and everything in there. Fixed the governor or the regulator. Unblocked the nozzle. That was completely blocked, but still not quite running. If I wind it out a bit, it starts surging. Okay, I'm about done with this piece of junk for this afternoon. I've, uh, as you can see in the previous video, rebuilt the uh, unloader. I've checked out all the low pressure side, replaced all that, no air leaks. Just doesn't want to work. If I change the regulator, it just starts surging. And that's about it. Yeah, if I play with the uh, unloader, it'll either just sit there spraying at low pressure or it'll start surging up to about 1200 psi and then back down again, just thump, thump, thump. I just can't get it to settle down. Um, there's an online DIY thing which suggested getting rid of any minor water leaks which could pull air in, but the thing is I'm feeding it 100 psi of mains water pressure. So it's stuffing more, more water into it than it could ever use and it's still doing the same thing even though I've sealed up every possible leak there is. So there's no air getting into the system, no, I don't know. It's close, it's probably something really silly and simple but it's just not quite doing it. And the funny thing is I can screw a restrictor onto it and I don't think it's here but I've got a uh, half inch BSP cap which I've drilled a 1.5 millimeter hole in roughly the same size as the nozzle on the gun and it works fine but as soon as I screw the gun on there which has the same size restriction it starts surging so I'm wondering if the pump is a little bit tired and the pressure differential going through the, the length of the hose is too much for it and the unloader is just tripping out so if anyone knows a way of fine tuning or even hotting these things up to the point where they work properly again, the pump isn't pissing water, it's not leaking out of the uh, bleeders or anything. Right. There's no water coming out of that little drain there, which is one of the cylinder drains. If you look down there you can sort of see one of the pistons, same with that side. I think that side there occasionally drops one drip like it's done that much in all day. I've run it for about half an hour so far and you just get the occasional tiny drip out of that one. This little pressure bomb, bomb thingy here I don't know about. I mean there's no pressure in it. I've bled it back to static pressure as it is. If there is a diaphragm or a, a bladder inside it it's blown. I just don't think that's doing anything. It might not help. I guess the next step might be to actually unscrew it and replace it with just a, a plug. I'll just plug off wherever that goes onto it, but it doesn't seem like it would change anything. I'm getting a terrible water hammer through the hose though, I can hear the pipes in the house rattling every time it surges. So that could be part of the problem, but I'm done for tonight, I've, I've got much better things to muck around with. I've wasted enough time on this today. Thanks for watching. Now yeah, there we go. Nice and cleaned up.
Beautiful. So this is why it pays to have a big lathe in your backyard. <laughs> you can grip pretty much anything you want. And a good chuck with detachable jaws. But no, that's come up pretty good. It was out by quite a bit too. And that's Loctited on as well, so it can't move around on the shaft like it had been. But it actually worked itself loose. It's quite surprising. But yeah, put it back together again. Put the fan and everything back on. Oh yeah, the guy who owns that air conditioner there dropped this off. He said it's a taste of things to come. Like the kind of stuff I'll be pulling out of that big um, thermoforming moulder machine. <laughs> VFD, three phase. Plenty of good bits to get out of that machine. Cool.